Hello everybody and welcome to an extra special journal with me video. In today's video I am going to be showing you the process and supplies that I used for my daughter's first birthday journal. So these supplies are from my Your Creative Studio April box. It had a floral theme so it was perfect and I absolutely love this box. It's my favorite one. This is my dried flower binder. This is a sticker book I got from Tuesday morning that is very girly <laughs> and some washi tape samples. These stickers are from Cafe Analog. These papers are from Sora Asan. These are Andy Reese's or My Storied Pages printables. And then these are just supplies. These papers also are from Sora Asan. And then these stickers and papers are from Cafe Analog. And then just a random assortment of stickers from my stash. So if you haven't picked up on it already, those are from Sticky Club. Love their stickers, by the way. Um, but if you haven't picked up on it, I am doing a floral-themed everything for Clara. Uh, everything. <laughs> Her nursery will eventually be floral-themed. She's still in the bedroom with us, and she will have to share a room with her older brother, Cullen. So we're going to do a split nursery. But um, the journal that I'm using is a Midori B6 journal, and it's grid. And I'm pretty sure I bought it on Amazon. But... For her first birthday, we did a vintage floral, um, like, English tea party kind of, like, theme. And it turned out really, really great. And I took a bunch of really beautiful pictures. And uh, I haven't really done anything with photos for Clara pretty much at all. I haven't done, like, a baby book, like, photo album. Um, I've pretty much just kept like a written journal, several actually, for her with no real photos included. And I had every intention of doing like a mini Project Life album with all of her pictures, but um, it just got to be overwhelming to have to print pictures, edit them, and it just, it was just too much. So I decided for her first birthday to really take advantage and take pictures and print them and put them in a journal where they're all in one place to kind of memorialize her first birthday and the things that we did, how I decorated and just everything involved with that. So the things I'm including in this journal, other than the photos from the party are uh, the people that attended the party, the menu, the tea that we used for her tea party, um, just little snippets, funny quotes that people said, um, just, just things like that. It's not more, it's, it's not really like a journal journal it's more of just like a like a quick like peek into the day and I didn't want it to be word heavy it's very clearly picture heavy and I'm using a lot of stickers and I love the way that it turns out this is going to be quite a long video it's 22 minutes long so if you haven't already gotten yourself a cup of tea go ahead and hit that pause button Go ahead and get you something to drink, something to snack on, because we're going to be here for a while. And uh, if you hear anything in the background, my husband is taking advantage of nap time uh, during the weekend to do some little projects in the living room. He's switching out some of our outlets so that they're kid-friendly and baby-safe. And so if you hear any noises in the background, it's just him. Also, I'm going to be sharing Clara's birth story. It feels appropriate while we're talking about her first birthday. So if I can't remember something, which is likely, I'll probably ask him so you might hear him respond in the background. So just want to go back to the whole idea behind this journal. I took the pictures, printed them at home on my Canon PIXMA printer, which I absolutely love, and cut them, used a like fancy corner rounder. It's like a scalloped corner rounder, and then put them in order on the pages of how I wanted it to be, keeping in mind to leave space for journaling and all the other things. So I love these printables right here. These are, like I said, from My Storied Pages. They are a printable that I purchased off of Etsy from him and they're absolutely beautiful. He actually is the one who did my um, rebranding. When I rebranded Skylar Hand Studio, he actually came up with my logo and my branding and I just love it. He's amazing. If you ever are looking to hire someone to do your branding, you should definitely consider him. 
He's a great guy and very talented. So moving on, <laughs> I also made her cake that day. Uh, she ha actually had several cakes. She, um, her birthday was on an actual Thursday and we did a little small family dinner on Thursday where she had a cake, obviously. And then on her actual party day, she had her own like smash cake. And then there was another cake that we were gonna, that I got for everybody else to share, but it was also pretty fancy. <laughs> but this particular cake, her cake, um, my husband and I worked on together. So he iced it in a very like rough, rustic kind of way where like the cake was kind of showing through. And then I used dried flowers. So I used some dried roses from our own rose garden and some other pretty pink flowers that I found at our local grocery store and dried them ahead of time because I knew I wanted to do this particular style cake and then stuck them into the cake like it was kind of falling down the side at an angle. And it really, really turned out really fun. I love the way it turned out. And then on t uh, sitting, the cake is sitting on top of a doily, and then her special birthday hanky. She got a, she got, she was gifted a birthday hanky, and I loved it so much that I decided to incorporate it into the party just because it was very thoughtful and it was beautiful, and it had flowers on it, obviously, <laughs> and I just love it. So it turned out really well. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to get started on her birth story. I, it's a very, obviously all birth stories are very personal, but this is super personal just because she's my last child. She's my only little girl and her birth was just really extraordinary. It was life changing. Um, it was just all the things. So just a little background. I have four children. I have three older boys and then Clara is the youngest and her slightly older brother, Cullen, is only 300 and, babe, what is it? 356 days? Yeah, she's, th she's 356 days younger than Cullen, her older brother. She was an unexpected gift. We were not planning her. We planned for all of our other children, but Clara was a very happy accident. And, um... It was a tough pregnancy in the sense that she um, was an IUGR baby, which basically means that she wasn't thriving in the womb. She was not gaining weight the way she was supposed to be. And um, we were high risk for probably about 70% of her pregnancy. So um, until like 18 weeks, we didn't know she was IUGR. And then at 18 weeks, we found out that she was and then at 34 or 35, maybe even 36 weeks, somewhere in that range, she finally reached a weight um, that was acceptable to not be considered high risk anymore. And so we still had to go see the doctor, but she wasn't considered high risk anymore. She finally had reached that. Um, I think it was, she, she had to be like four pounds or five pounds or something. And she had finally reached that point. Um, we actually had a scare because um, two weeks before she was not technically considered high risk anymore, the doctors told us, hey, she's finally where she's supposed to be. She's not high risk anymore. And then we got a call like two days later saying that they had done some math wrong and she was still technically high risk and that we had to continue coming to the, um, that doctor's office. So that was a kick in the kick in the gut because we thought we were in the clear and we thought she was going to be fine and it turned out at that particular time she wasn't quite there yet and um, we actually didn't know what we were having. We kept her gender a secret throughout the entire pregnancy which is an act of God in itself because we had um, an ultrasound once a week for months months I mean just forever and the fact that all of these doctors and nurses were able to keep her gender a secret and not accidentally say oh she's looking good today or oh she's this or oh she's that I don't know how they were able to do it but the entire pregnancy no one let it slip uh, no one no one ruined it for us and so the day of her delivery was the day we found out what we were having and it was incredible 
incredible. <laughs> it was the greatest gift I think I've ever been given. And if there are any pregnant mamas out there or um, mothers who are trying to get pregnant, I 100%, like a hundred and million percent suggest doing this. If it's your first, if it's your last, if you're just curious of what that's going to be like, just do it. Just do it. It's, it's incredible. Um, especially for us because we had three boys and we were really praying for a little girl and uh, it turned out that we did get her in the end. But I'm going to back that story up just a little bit. Um, we, I think three out of four of my kids have all had induction dates. So basically that means I got to 40 weeks. The doctor said we are going to let you go one more week, but then we are inducing you. And every single one of them, Hunter, my oldest, Cullen, my third, and Clara, my fourth, all decided to come the morning of their induction, hands down. Like before I even could get up for the day for the hospital, they all decided to come. They waited for those induction orders and then they decided to go ahead and and come into the world. So I had spoken to my doctor or I'd gone to my doctor's appointment, my regular, like regular doctor appointment earlier in the day. And I had my membrane swept because I was 40 weeks and, or no, I was 41. I was 41, right babe? Or was I 40? 41. I think I had gotten to the 41 week mark or just before it, somewhere around that mark. Um, and the doctor swept my membranes and said good luck <laughs> hope this works and sent us on our way and um my doctor called me later in the day and said hey listen I'm actually going to be on call tomorrow um I won't be on call for your induction date that was set for like later in the week so I, I think it was like just after 40 weeks and so they had set the induction date for 41 or something like that and the doctor said, I'm not going to be working that night. So if you could just maybe come in tomorrow and we'll induce you tomorrow, we'll get this over with and you can meet your baby. And I would love to be there because he had delivered Cullen as well. And so we had really, I mean, our preg my pregnancies were back to back. And so <laughs> I saw the same doctor again and he really wanted to be there for my, my, um, my second delivery with him. And so I went home, relaxed. Did nothing all day except for call my mom and cry because inductions are the worst. I've personally never had one. Obviously, my babies all came out right before, like the day before, the night before I was scheduled to be induced. But I have heard very scary things about them and it just wasn't anything I wanted to be involved in because I don't believe in um, medicated births. It's just a personal preference. And so, um, yeah, I didn't... I didn't want to deal with an induction without medication and I have done it three times and I didn't want the fourth to be that one time that my body just gave out and I like couldn't do what I needed to do and had to get the um, epidural or whatever like no shame for any of the moms out there who have had any type of delivery it's just a personal preference for me it's my own personal beliefs I don't believe in extra medications or anything like that so um, anyway, inductions scare me <laughs> and I just didn't want any part of that. Didn't want to deal with it. And so I called my mom and cried all day long and I called my husband and cried all day long and we went to bed that night and around 11 o'clock, it was around 11 babe, right? It was like 11, 12 or just after 11, something like that. I started feeling contractions and we were laying in bed. I hadn't even gone to sleep yet. He was asleep, obviously. He can think about sleeping and just already be sleeping. But it takes me a while to fall asleep, especially when you're like 10 months pregnant. But I was awake and started feeling some minor contractions. And then probably like three contractions into that, I had to start breathing them out. I had to start moaning. I had to get up and start walking and knew immediately that it was go time. There was no thinking about it. There was no like hesitation. I could tell that my body was already in motion, already acting, and I needed to get to the hospital as quickly as possible um, because they started off like three minutes apart. <laughs> so we got in the car. Luckily, my grandmother was staying with us at the time 
to help with the babies and because she knew I was going to be delivering. So she was able to stay with all the babies at the house while we went to the hospital. And um, we got to the hospital and of course it's in the middle of a construction zone and our delivery suite has its own special secured entrance. You have to go in through a special elevator and then you are immediately stopped by special security and it's a whole thing. And my special elevator was completely blocked off from access because it was in the middle of being like a construction zone. And so there was nowhere to park. My husband panicked. He got as close to the door as he could. And I just got out of the car, just bolted <laughs> and started waddling my way to this door because I knew it, it was go time. And so I'm waddling through. My husband is panicking, trying to find a place to park that the car isn't going to get towed. And in the span, baby, how... How much distance was it from where I got out to the van or the, I mean, the, the door? Like how many times did I stop to have contractions? It was at least 150 yards of construction. Yeah. He says it's 150 yards of construction. And I like stopped. An active construction zone, like a ripped up road. <laughs> they were laying sewer pipe. The yeah. curbs were all undone. There were no sidewalks. There was no sidewalks. It was an actual pipes. construction zone. The road was ripped up. There was mounds of dirt everywhere. And you just went running through it. And I just bolted right through it. Like, I could see the tower. I need to get to that tower. So I went for it. So in 150 yards, I had to stop three times to breathe through very powerful contractions. If that gives you any indication of how quickly things were moving. So because I had to stop those three times, my husband had the time to park the car and find me in this no, construction I, zone. I left it where it was. Oh, did you leave it? That's how I know you went through the construction zone because I was tripping over shit. <laughs> I didn't, I thought you had parked it. That's funny. I was, um, only, I was only 50 yards behind you. That's funny. So we get into the elevator, we get up to the door, the deck, uh, we get through security. I had called ahead and said, hey, listen, here's my name, here's my information. I'm an old pro. I know what's happening to my body. Things are happening. I need to like, I need to have someone there available because they have like protocols and, um, they, a lot of times make you wait. And so anyway, we got to the hospital at midnight. We get straight through security. There was no waiting, nothing. Um, they tried to make me go to the, like, what's that? the triage room and we didn't even make it to the door they were like yep nope you don't need triage you need to go straight to a room so I went straight to a room they tried to get me hooked to IVs my body doesn't do well with that um the IVs don't work in my arms and so the nurses were having a very difficult time they tr how many times did they prick me babe like six um, I think it was like three times in each arm right three in each arm yeah they tried the top of your hand yeah, it was three times in each arm, and then they tried the last, like, seventh time, they tried to get it on the top of my hand. My body was not going for it. I must have been dehydrated or something. So I'm actively laboring while I'm getting pricked all these times, busting veins, holes all over the place, blood all over the place. It was a mess. But eventually they left me alone because I had warned them, hey, listen, uh, my body doesn't do IVs. Just, like, leave me be. Of course, they didn't leave me be, so... Um, anyway, I get on a birthing ball. I'm on the birthing ball for probably 20 minutes or so. And doctor decides to come in and check me and suddenly it's go time. I'm on the bed, stirrups are up and it's go time. I won't go into do, too many details because like TMI, but, um, only a few pushes. Babe, how many would you say? Two proper like contraction pushes or? No, it was. It was uh, three full sets of contractions. It was three contractions I pushed through to get her out. Um, but we had to s think that we had to s we had to slowly go through it, right? Because well, the doctor was super concerned because of how Cullen came out. Yeah, so Cullen came out with some issues, and so the doctor was pretty concerned about uh, delivering, and so we kind of took things as slowly as we could to be cautious and aware of how delivery was going to go, but. Um, Clara came out and everybody in the room knew we didn't know what we were having because they asked right away and that information is in my charts but when we said right away that we didn't want to know what we were having everybody was super excited and they knew we had three boys anyway Clara comes out and 
they're holding her up, but her umbilical cord is hanging between her legs, so nobody could see, what, we couldn't see what she was, and so we're just kind of sitting there like, uh. <laughs> um, so they move the umbilical cord, and we see that she is a gorgeous little beautiful, perfect baby girl, and we scream, <laughs> and I just remember screaming, oh, I finally have my little girl, and just bursting into tears. And just holding her as hard and tightly as I could. And it was beautiful and perfect and quick. She was born at 1.11. My first contract contraction was just after 11 p.m. And she was born at 1.11 a.m. So quick, quick delivery. <laughs> quick labor, quick delivery. And it was absolutely beautiful. It was a beautiful labor. It was a beautiful and easy delivery. And I just, oh, I love it. So. I hope that you guys have enjoyed <laughs> this 22 minute video and the process of watching me play with paper. Um, this is just a quick base. I'm going to work on these pages a lot more, but um, this was just a quick laying all the pictures down with supplies. And once I'm actually finished with it, I will flip through it again so that you can see the finished products product with all the words and the journaling and all the extra bits that I do decide to add after the fact. Um, but yeah, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I tried to fill it as best I could <laughs> with my story so that you guys weren't just sitting there idly for 22 minutes. If you have any questions, like always, please feel free to leave them down below. If you're not subscribed, I would encourage you to do so. It would make me feel very special because I would know that you wanted to be a part of my community here and I will catch you guys later. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll catch you later. Bye.